You guys hear me okay? All right. I hope everyone is having a wonderful time at this conference here. Um, welcome to our session. This is a 30-minute power pack session discussing Tableau SAML capabilities. Uh, we have a lot to cover. Uh, I will try and cover a lot of things through slides, but more importantly, I'll try and show the demo where you can actually see Okta and Tableau working in action. There are a lot of nuances that come into. Hopefully, I won't have to revert to my backup slides, which have screenshots, uh, but please bear with me. Just by a quick show of hands, how many of you already have an Okta or some kind of a SAML implementation already? Okay, cool, perfect, thank you. My name is Abhishek Singh, and I lead the consulting delivery team for Tableau. I've been with Tableau for four years. Uh, we have a global team of architects and analysts that work with uh, large enterprises on a daily basis. It was about uh, two or three years ago, I was uh, setting up Tableau server for a customer, and I was asked if I could set up SAML for them using Okta. And quite frankly, I had never done it before. But I love challenges, so I jumped on the opportunity. Even now, I will admit frankly, I'm not an Okta expert, but I like trying things out. And the main reason I'm here is because it's fairly easy to do. I was also talking to our track owner for this uh, specific session, and they mentioned a lot of our support cases are actually on SAML integration itself. This is fairly easy to set up, just a little bit more education is required. That's why I'm here. So hopefully this will uh, be a useful session. Uh, this is a high-level agenda. We will cover the what, why, and how for SAML. We will discuss options for SAML integration. And very importantly, we'll go through a demo. I'll give you uh, a few seconds to read through this. You may have seen this, it's pretty popular. The paradox of security is essentially end users want a very simple yet secure way of accessing that applications. And that is something which is hard to provide, right? And that's what single sign-on or SAML essentially achieves to do for you. Now what is SAML? I won't read through this, but SAML essentially stands for security, assertion, markup, language. As it pertains to Tableau, security is essentially providing another external entity the authority to do the authentication and then pass that over to the Tableau server. So in our case, Tableau server is not doing the authentication, but trusting another entity to do the authentication for it. The assertion is actually something that the external identity provides back to the Tableau server after the authentication is actually done. And the markup language is essentially the XML transfer of information between systems. Now why use SAML in the first place, right? Well, there are several reasons. Let's talk about standardization, right? You may have different applications in your organization, and they all may have their own username and password. If you use SAML, you can actually look at opportunities to bring them all on the same platform as far as security is concerned. By a quick show of hands, how many of you actually share the same password across multiple applications? I know I do, so we all do that, right? And wouldn't it be easier if we have a standard way of authenticating and logging in into different applications using a single unified interface? So that's what SAML tries to do as well. It's also a secure mechanism. You may have different applications with their own ways of authenticating, their own standards that they follow. SAML essentially, or Okta in our specific case, has a lot of those best practices already built in. So it's already a secure system, and we can rely on its own security. It's easy to use. So if you've been using Okta or some other SAML uh, application, you may already know. But it's as simple as using a smartphone, where you see a list of apps, and you can just click on it, and it'll take you directly to the app itself, right? Isn't that a simpler interface rather than going individually to applications? And above all, it's IT friendly. How many times IT is called upon, you know, my password has expired, or I'm, my account is logged, and they have to spend a lot of time actually doing all this work. There was a recent study that was done, and we realized that actually, on an average, people spend over 44 hours in a year just logging into applications. 
on an average, they do four application logins every single day. 44 hours, it's more than a week. Let's talk a little bit about terminology as well. Uh, the very first is client. Now, who is the client in our specific case? It's actually a Tableau server user that is trying to access a resource on the Tableau server. So that's a client for us. The next one is a service provider. This is an application that is providing a service that the user wants. In our case, again, it's the Tableau server. And then the identity provider. Now, this is the external entity that is doing the authentication itself. In our case, it could be Okta. We've also seen one login. We actually use one login internally at Tableau. And then we also have uh, ping identity, which is also fairly common. As long as there is a SAML provider, which is 2.0 compliant, Tableau can integrate fairly easily with that. This is a busy slide, but I think the workflow is fairly important, so please bear with me. Uh, let's take a look at the workflow. How does uh, the authentication process work? This is an example in which this is called a SP-initiated authentication. So the service provider, again, if you recall, is actually the Tableau server itself. So a user goes on a browser and tries to access a resource on the Tableau server. It could be a view, it could be the sign-on page, it could be a workbook, a direct resource on the Tableau server. So the step one itself is the user trying to access the Tableau server. Step two, Tableau server knows that it is configured to use an external identity provider, or SAML in our case. So all it does is it creates a request, a SAML request, and passes it over to the identity provider. So that's step two. The IDP in that, in then actually requests the username for authentication. So essentially a password, right? And once it validates the password, it actually sends an assertion or a SAML response back to the Tableau server, saying that this user is actually authenticated. And once that is done, the resource that was accessed by the user is made available by the Tableau server itself. In all these situations, Tableau server never stores the password or requests the password directly for the end user. So that was SP initiated. The other way is actually doing an IDP initiated login. So in this case, you're actually going on a portal that may have a list of applications that the SAML is configured to use, and Tableau is just one icon or one application there. You just click on it, and it'll take you right into the application. The difference in this is there's no request for SAML authentication, because the user is already authenticated on the Tableau server. So all that is happening is essentially a SAML response being sent over to the Tableau application. There are different options when you configure SAML, depending upon your Tableau server uh, setup, you could have multiple sites or you could have a single site. The simplest and most common we have seen is SAML being implemented at the entire, entire server level, right? So that's a server-wide SAML authentication mechanism. The other option is you could have local authentication server-wide, but certain sites might use SAML, right? You might wonder what is the specific use case for this specific scenario. If you have acquisitions, if you have different business units with different uh, security standards, this is something which is common in that kind of a scenario. Also think about Tableau's own implementation, which is Tableau Online, right? If you don't have a SAML integration, you have a username and password that actually Tableau is maintaining for you. But then we have different entities. When you sign up for an online instance, you're actually given a site, right? You may or may not choose to use SAML for that site, right? So you may have multiple sites, and each of them actually have different SAML authentication mechanisms. And the third one is server-wide SAML. So you have SAML as a blanket authentication for the entire server, but you may have certain sites with different SAML IDPs configured. So if you have multiple sites, and some sites want to use one IDP, another site want to use another IDP, that is possible as well. This is essentially a recap where we have server-wide SAML. In this case, we have one login for Tableau server. All sites use the same SAML provider. In this case, we have uh, server-wide local authentication. So username and passwords are stored on the Tableau server, but there are sites that actually use different IDPs. 
In this case, we have site 1 using Okta, site 2 using Ping Identity. In this one, we have server-wide SAML, but then different sites may have their own versions or their own SAML providers, which could be different. Some compatibility requirements to keep in mind. We don't support multiple competing authentication mechanisms. So if you have SAML authentication, we cannot support Kerberos at the same time. So you can only choose whether you want to use Kerberos or you want to use SAML, right? Mutual SSL, again, is not supported. And when we take a look at the configuration screen, it will become fairly clear that you can only select one anywhere. And then another thing to keep in mind is if you have site-specific SAML, then you need to have Tableau Desktop version 10 or later to authenticate. Time for a quick demo. So what I have here is I have a Tableau server configured on our AWS instance. This is the TSM that you can actually see. We have a single node. It's pretty basic. And what we will do is take a look at the configuration on the Tableau side, and then we'll take a look at the configuration on the Okta side. And then we will attempt to authenticate a user and see if the integration actually works. So on the Tableau server side, now again, we have logged in on the TSM, which allows us to make configuration changes, set up SAML, authentication. We go into the configuration tab here, and then we go into the user identity and access, and we go into the authentication method. So it could be username and password when you're actually setting it up if you've chosen uh, local authentication by default. But we can actually flip it and choose one of the different options here. And this is where it's fairly clear. You cannot have Kerberos, SAML at the same time, or Mutual SSL at the same time. You can only choose one, right? So let's go ahead and choose SAML. I did pre-configure it because it takes a while for the server to restart. And I didn't want to waste five minutes and 10 minutes waiting for the server to come up. It's already pre-configured, but I'll show what the settings are. So you switch it to SAML. This is also a single site server, so we don't have a lot of site configuration options here. This is, again, just to keep it basic so you know how to get it off. Now, the very first thing is enable SAML authentication for the entire server. Step one, you have to provide the Tableau server return URL. So once the authentication is done on the IDP, where should that redirection happen from the IDP back to the Tableau server? Uh, almost always is just the Tableau server URL itself, right? We also have the concept of a SAML entity ID. Again, this is something that you will reference when you start configuring your uh, Okta side of the integration as well. You have to provide a certificate and a key file as well. So this is for SSL. Now, one key thing here is that the certificate is not used for encryption. It's actually used for authentication. Slightly different than what you do for implementing SSL on your Tableau server. Again, this is not for uh, encryption. It's more for authentication. So in almost all cases, we've seen customers try and reuse the SSL certificate they already have. And in many cases, they are able to. The caveat here is that you should not have a passphrase on your key file. If you do, there are actually open SSL commands that will allow you to remove the passphrase and have reuse your key file, which is already there with you. Once you provide your certificate and key file, you're done with step one. You can download your metadata file from Tableau server, which you can then provide to Okta. In our case, because Okta has a tight integration with Tableau already, there is nowhere in Okta that you can provide an XML file from Tableau. So you don't have to worry about step two for Okta specifically. But if you're using some homegrown or some other SAML provider, this is where you would download the metadata file from Tableau. Sorry about that. Now once you have that, now you're supposed to go to the IDP, Okta, and generate a metadata file from there as well. And that's what you bring it back here and upload it here. 
So we'll take a look at that shortly, but let's complete this section. So that's the step four, where once you have the metadata file, you upload that on the Tableau server itself. Step five, fairly basic. You can just keep it to the default. These are attributes that are passed by your IDP. And how do they map to attributes within the Tableau server itself? The most important one is actually username, right? Because when you create a user in Tableau, you provided a username. And you have to make sure that the users actually match between your IDP and your Tableau server, right? If you're using a different attribute for users in your Okta implementation, you may have to change that attribute name here. Almost always it's username. In step six, you can actually choose to allow Tableau Desktop to use SAML as well. In some cases, customers don't want a single sign-on on the desktop level, so you can disable it right here. Same for the mobile as well. You also have options to uh, uh, use SAML single sign-out. Uh, and we'll take a look at how to configure that on the, uh, on the Okta side as well. Now once you're done with these changes, all you have to do is just save and restart the Tableau server. But again, keep in mind, we still have to get the metadata file from Okta. So let's take a look on the Okta side. So I already have a pre-configured Tableau server as an application on my Okta login. However, let's take a look at the admin side and see what options do we have to add different applications. So I go to the admin console, and you will see applications. And this is where you can add applications. So when you click on add applications, you will see a bunch of applications here which are already pre-configured for you. Uh, however, let's search for Tableau. And you will see two. One is Tableau Online, and the other one is Tableau Server. In our case, we're going to use Tableau Server, but Tableau Online is also fairly common. Just by a quick uh, show of hands, how many are using Tableau Online here? OK. So the integration, when it comes to setting up SAML integration between Tableau Server, which is on-prem, or Tableau Online is fairly similar. Your online is actually much easier, because you have lesser steps to go through. In our case, we're going to go ahead and use Tableau Server. And it's already pre-configured, so let me just go ahead and open that up. Okay. When you add the application, this is the screen that you'll actually get. Let's go through some of the key things here that you may have to configure. If you want to provide a logout experience, because if you don't use it, when you log in on Tableau Server, you will actually not see a logout button at all if you have SAML configured. So you have to choose Enable Single Logout, and you have to provide your signature certificate, which is essentially the SSL certificate you may have provided on the Tableau Server side. Now, this is the location from which you can get the metadata from your IDP, right? So we'll take a look at this very shortly. There are some more advanced settings here that you have to provide. You have to provide the login URL, which is essentially your Tableau server login, right? So we already have that pre-built here. Uh, we have the SAML entity ID. If you recall, we had the entity ID on the Tableau server side. So we provide the same entity ID here as well. We get some support tickets because sometimes we add a backslash here, and that returns some errors sometimes. So just be mindful, just to keep it simple. You probably have tableau.mycompany.com, so just keep it simple and keep it like that. And this is where you can choose what username you want to provide when the SAML response is sent by Okta. By default, it is set to Okta username, and we can keep it as is, but you have different options you can choose here as well. Now, once you do these changes, you can actually click on Identity Provider Metadata, which is what gives you the XML file. So let's click on that and let's see what it looks like. 
It's pretty cryptic, but a few things to keep in mind here. If you are enabling single logout, and if you run into issues because you don't have a logout options on your Tableau server, just make sure that you have a metadata line here, which is for single logout service, which should be right here, with the HTTP post binding. That is critical. If you don't have it, then your logout will actually not work, and you may not have a logout option on the Tableau server side. Once you set this up, the next step is to essentially do an assignment, right? So this is where you actually add users on the Tableau server. So in our case, I've already configured a couple of users. But if you have users already configured in your Okta deployment, this is where you will come and actually add them and assign usernames as well. In our case, we have uh, my Yahoo account here. And if I click on this icon, I can see the username that will actually get passed over to the Tableau server. So when you're configuring users on the Tableau server side, you have to make sure that the users actually exist with the same ID. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, the extent of the integration. This is how you configure the Okta side. We've already seen how to configure things on the Tableau server side. You can generate the metadata file that we saw. And once you have that, you go back to your TSM and you upload the metadata file here right here. Keep in mind, step two is not required for Okta. And then all you have to do is just restart your Tableau server. Now let's attempt a login on the uh, Tableau server here. And let's see what kind of uh, uh, interface we actually get. So this is the URL of my Tableau server. It's a little cryptic. And it's a self-signed certificate. So we get some warnings here. And since I, I was already signed, it actually took me straight there. So let me just sign out here. So I've just started the browser in incognito mode where it doesn't use the cookies, which are already stored in another session. And this is where I can provide the username and password for Okta. You go ahead and do that. And it'll take me straight to the Tableau server itself, right? So again, keep in mind, you're not providing a username and password on the Tableau side. When you try to log in or access any resource, you're being redirected to Okta. Okta collects the username and password and passes some of that information back to the Tableau server side which gives you access to the resources that you have asked. Now, a key thing here is just to take a look at the flow of XML between Okta and Tableau server side. So let's take a look at, at that. We have a utility. Uh, I don't know if you use Firefox, but we have a utility in Firefox called SAML Tracer. It's an extension or an add-on. And we have similar utilities in Chrome, and I'm pretty sure in IE as well, that you can actually use. So let's take a look at uh, Firefox. So this is my SAML tracer add-on. And let me show how you get that. So you go into add-ons. And you go into extensions. And if you search for SAML tracer, it will allow you to add that extension to your Firefox browser. The reason why this is important you can get the XML from your log files, but that's a little harder to do. You have access to some of these utilities that you can actually utilize. If you're troubleshooting, you run into issues, this comes in very handy. And once you have added this, let's go back and sign out this user first. Well, actually, it doesn't even have that sign out. So I'm going to start my SAML tracer here, and I'll try to do a sign on. And now the user is already logged in. So I don't know if you've used Fiddler, which is another tool that you can actually use to track uh, uh, information being passed. 
In this specific case, you will have certain rows highlighted which actually have these SAML assertions being passed. So let's take a look at this and let's go to the SAML tab. And this is my SAML response that actually came back from Okta to the Tableau server. So let's analyze this a little bit deeper. So you can skip the first few lines. Uh, there are essentially metadata information that is also coming through. But the key thing here is we have an attribute which is being passed over. And if you go all the way to the end, you will find an attribute statement with the attribute of username and what is the actual user that is being passed. So if you are troubleshooting your setup and you configure the integration and you get user cannot be found or some other errors, just make sure you are able to get to the XML which is being transferred and take a look at the attribute statement and try to find a username and the actual username that the user used for login as well. Now, if there are mismatched users and you get errors, this is a very good way to identify what those errors would be. Now, let me go back to the uh, presentation here. So I had some backup slides. Uh, thankfully, I didn't have to use them, but this is a screenshot of uh, the configuration on the Tableau side. This is a screenshot of the configuration on the Okta side. This is the SAML response. We already see, saw this one. This is the metadata, and we talked about this one, just making sure you have the, uh, uh, the log out uh, metadata as well. Troubleshooting tips and tricks, SAML tracer, uh, it's very, very useful. You can also set log level for your Wiz portal. If you're using an older version of Tableau Server, you can use tab admin or you can use TSM admin uh, to set the configuration to a lower level so you can capture more information. Again, keep in mind, this should be only a temporary change in configuration because you don't want to collect a lot of information in your log files. Uh, one key issue we've found in several instances is the username attribute itself is missing. So be on the lookout for that. All assertions that are being passed are timestamped as well. So if clocks are out of sync, there is a slight chance that your assertions may actually fail. So be on the lookout for that. Assertions should be signed. So you saw that my Tableau server was configured on SSL, and I was using a certificate and a key file as well. We only support HTTP post. HTTP redirect will not work. So be mindful of that as well. And sometimes destinations don't match. So again, if you have configuration on the Tableau server side, make sure they are similar on the Okta side as well when it comes to the Tableau server login URL. Here are some helpful resources for you. Most of them are from our online guide itself. If you have an online implementation, there is actually an entire article on how to set up Tableau online and Okta integration, which could come in handy. We've also seen a lot of customers actually use ADFS, so that could come in handy as well. So I would encourage you to take a look at these if you run into any issues. We will open the floor for questions shortly, but just a kind reminder, if you've attended other sessions as well as this session, please feel free to complete a survey. It will help us get better in providing more and useful content for you. With that, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. Yes, sir. Okay. So the question uh, you have uh, multiple tablet server environments, right? and you're using a single Okta deployment, and how would you configure it that way, right? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, if you have, uh, um, so if you take a look at the settings that we just did on the Okta side, right, there is actually only one application that you add, which is a Tableau Server application. If you have multiple Tableau Server applications, you will unfortunately have to configure multiple applications on the Okta side, 
and then make sure you're only providing access to users to the Tableau Server instance that they are authorized to use. It has to be one-to-one. -one. That's correct, yeah. Yes, sir. So <clears throat> let's say you have a Tableau Server deployment here uh, at a Tableau company, and you want to give access to some Microsoft employees and some uh, AWS employees. So do all these users have to be created in your identity store? Is that a must? I, I've seen that before adding SAML, the user has to exist in identity store. Otherwise, there's nothing, nothing down, the, down the line work. Are there any ways around that? Should we be using like separate AD or you know, should we create these users in local store? What's the preferred approach for Got federation? It. Got it. So the question is, how do you have internal users as well as external users on the Tableau server, right? So you may have some internal employees, but you may also be opening up the environment to vendors or partners, right? And how do you ensure that you can support that on the Tableau server environment? So that's a very common use case, and that's where I think uh, SAML comes in handy. Now, when you, when you install Tableau server, you're only given two options. Use local authentication or use trusted. If you use trusted, you are essentially integrating with AD, right? And you may not have these users on the AD anyway. So there's no way you can use AD in that kind of a situation. So you will have to use local authentication, right? You will have to configure these users on the Tableau server. Now, of course, when you configure it in local authentication mode, you have to provide a password, right? This password is going to be redundant if you're actually going to integrate with Okta, right? Okta is a full-blown identity store itself. So it can contain users from different identities itself, right? So you will have to make sure that on the Okta side, you have a way to add users from your organizations as well as external users, right? So as long as you have that link established, you will have to configure Tableau Server in local authentication. Okta will need to maintain a list of all users internal and external, and then it should work seamlessly, right? Any other questions? All right, so the question is, if you are adding a new user, do you have to add the user both on the Tableau server side and the Okta side? And the answer is yes, of course, because you need to make sure that uh, the user exists on the Tableau server side because run, once Okta does the authentication, it essentially passes a username, right? So that has to map to an existing Tableau server user. So you have to have a one-to-one -one mapping between users in Okta and in Tableau server. Yes, sir. So each time when you add the user on the Tableau server, you have to restart the Tableau server? So the question is, if you add a user on the Tableau server side, do you have to restart the Tableau server? No, you don't. You can keep it running. That's totally fine. Okay. So it sounds like you're using, obviously, Tableau for all the role-based access control. But if you were hooking up a custom app to Okta outside of Tableau, can Okta manage authorization and roles? Or do you have to go to a separate? Uh, so if I got the question correctly, and maybe this is an important point as well, so there is the concept of authentication which we talked about, and then there's also this concept of authorization in terms of what content you actually get to see. So when you do uh, a SAML integration, Tableau server only supports authentication externally. You cannot use authorization from a different application into Tableau server. So all that content permissioning, all the roles and site roles and everything, that is strictly within Tableau itself. You can do that in Okta, but unfortunately right now, Tableau server cannot reuse that. So you have to build that within Tableau itself. So you can build it within Okta? You can build it. custom apps, not Tableau. You can, to my knowledge, yes, yes. Uh, one more important thing I forgot to mention. Um, if you are an online customer, we have a uh, sort of a beta release, so you can also do user onboarding through Okta. We don't have that for on-prem yet. What it means is that you can actually synchronize users in Okta and Tableau Server on a regular basis, just like Active Directory, right? We have AD Sync. We don't have that for on-prem users, but that is something which is fairly easy to do as well. Okta has a built-in APIs, Tableau Server has its own REST APIs, and you can use that to build that integration itself. But for online customers, it's actually in beta release. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So the question is, uh, 
if you are using a load balancer uh, and you are configuring this Okta integration or SAML integration, do you provide the uh, the URL for the load balancer or the Tableau server URL itself? Well, you will have to provide it for the load balancer because essentially that is what the end users will actually use to access your resource. If you do have uh, a URL directly to the Tableau server, you know, one of your nodes goes down, right? You want the load balancer to come into play and redirect depending upon high availability and which nodes are up. So your, your uh, load balancer URL is what you should be using. that onboarding functionality um, on the roadmap for the on-prem solution? Okay, so the question is onboarding uh, functionality, is it gonna be on the roadmap for the on-prem? I don't have an exact answer, unfortunately. I said, I think it's fairly easy to build, and because it's already on online, and we're doing a lot of things in online first, uh, maybe it will come through, but I'll highly encourage uploading it on the community. I'm pretty sure it already exists as a request. Any other questions? All right, we are out on time. Thank you everyone for attending. I'll be here if you have any questions. Yeah. So, so I guess the authentication is done through Okta. Does it really matter what the user's password is on the server? Can you just no, tap it doesn't. Or tap on you can you can provide a like a yeah whatever like password you know password bang or.